This is Rhonda with Got Junk in Our Trunk Estate Services, and I'm doing a little bit different video today. I go to a lot of um, auctions and things like that. It's been a while since I've been to the auction where I bought this trunk. Um, it was one of the auction items that came up from a vendor that I uh, pretty much knew, and I knew that he did a lot of um, house cleanouts, you know, things like that along those lines, and this was one of the items that he pulled out in a house cleanout, and he got a little bit of information um, just from looking through things or whatever, but he also talked to the homeowner here, and it was part of her family um, down in Alabama, and um, so I saw a few things that were in here, but he, he kind of sold it as a mystery trunk, and so I thought I would just let you guys look through it with me, and uh, you can kind of see what I do on some of my auction items and things like that. There may be some things that are salvageable in here, and I may have bought a $10 trunk, so I thought we would look through here uh, together, so just bear with me. I'll probably be standing in front of the camera some and stuff like that, too, but um, I'll show you, you know, what I end up finding in here. This is an all-metal one. Uh, it looks to be about anywhere from about 19 probably 1930 to about 1950, um, given the age of the people that he was talking to and things like that and the incidents that happened um, that involved this trunk. It was probably around 1940, something like that. Let me just open these up. And like I said, it's been a while since I even looked in, and all I saw were the things that were on the top here. So. I bought it sight unseen on the rest of it. So we'll go through it together and see kind of what's in here. Got the pull out section, you know, with the head and all of the old trucks. Looks like an old seashell. Mm. Looking at the, the look of it and everything, it looks like maybe Gulf Coast. You can usually go by the veining that's on these and things like that, and that would be indicative of this. I think it was Alabama that this came from originally. Your child's scissors. They're rusty. They've got a name on them. I may or may not be able to read that. It's got USA, of course, on it. These look to be about 1940. So it's probably a child's set from school or something. Little ring. So it looks like it's little boy things in here. And I was told that this was a little boy. Some of his things. Feels like it's probably Bakelite, according to the coolness. I'll do a test on it later. I use 409 usually to test mine. Occasionally I go to another piece that's got a little crack in it. It'll still sell though. I'm hoping that y'all will be able to see this. The lighting's not really good in here for this, but we'll see what happens. Let's see. You notice I'm using gloves. I usually use gloves on things like this that have been stored a while. It, it smells of water. <laughs> so it's had some water damage in here or something. Um, This piece here, so, looks like it's been burned. It's got burned places in it. You can unwind it without hurting it. Yeah, it's been burned. Looks like something was set on fire on top of it. <laughs> Keep them yummy. Y'all see that? The glare may be too bad. I'm sorry if it is. Nope, oh, there you go. You see where it's been burned? It says it looks like it's rope tricks. Oh, glory. Yeah, it's got the rope tricks and things on the back. So this evidently belonged to the little boy as well. Bag. 
bag is full of puzzle pieces. Looks like an old jigsaw. This piece has Harris on it. So it's probably W. Harris. It was probably one of his uh, paintings that was made into a puzzle. Roller skates. Old roller skates. These are some old ones. I'll have to clean those up to see if there's a brand on it or anything. But these are the flat pipe. You just put your shoe on the top. Some of them had clamps, some of them didn't. Across here, it looks like at one time that these had clamps that would come across. Not necessarily a skate piece, you just have a clamp that came across or a strap. Most likely a strap. Just like these. Looks like floral ribbon. Yeah, this is floral ribbon. Some sort. <laughs> Kite string. That's how we used to do them. I'm 57. I was born in 1960. And right about that time or before then is when they started selling kite string like in a actual package or whatever. But we used to save our kite string like this too. Let's see, that's just on a stick. This is a pen, I think. Yeah. It's an old school nib pen. So... This was probably from 1930, 1940. In school, probably. These things were hard to come by. They were expensive in the day. You had to share books and things. My grandmother, when she was nine, she was in a one-room schoolhouse down in Houston, Mississippi. And she actually, at age nine, started teaching the kids. They had the one-room schoolhouse, so she taught like the four groups behind her, three or four groups behind her, and every year that they advanced, she would move up and she would start teaching the group. The boys' suspenders. Boy, this just reeks of water, like river water. Boys tie. Born by the size of it, I'd say he was preteen. This hooks around the back you know, so that you didn't have to tie it. <laughs> Boys belt. Yeah, definitely a preteen. See, it's all crunchy. Always undershirt, it's not marked, it doesn't have any tag or anything. Or some type of shirt, I don't guess it's an undershirt because it's got the ribs on it, I don't know, maybe. Put no. <laughs> a boy swimsuit. J.C. Penny. Let's see if you can see that old tag. Can you see that? That's cool looking. Little boys and little girls all wore the one pieces. Muscle man type suits. This one says Captain Air Service. <laughs> This be better without the light, y'all think? Yeah, maybe. I hope so. I'm gonna leave it off. Boys hat. It's felt. 
probably his Sunday go to meeting hat. Looks like Newell, maybe is the brand, or Sewell hat. It's got an S in the middle, maybe Sewell. Lock, lock, like lock, or some type of hasp lock. Some type of bottle of goo. I don't know, maybe. All right, this is interesting. I find these quite often in the old trunks and things like that, part of a toothbrush. These were so hard to come by that they would keep them because they were so expensive. Isn't that funny? So this may be toothpaste. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. A marble. Oh, boy, it's marble. Definitely a little boy here. Some more string. Tight string or this is thick, it's fishing string. Yeah, it's definitely fishing string. Let's look. Let's look. It's got the weight on it. It's a little fisherman. Looks like a winter hat. The earmuffs, you know, where you would pull it down over the ears. Got, got them on the springs. Keep them warm. There's no tag in this one, I don't think. I don't see a tag in that, but that's corduroy. Some of these cups have two and three of those if they're deep enough. This is more like a foot locker. Okay. So apparently some of his school work. Yeah, I know y'all aren't seeing that, are you? But you can see the writing. <laughs> is better with it on? Ugh. See if I can read some of this. It looks like third grade work in Miss Clary's room, April 17th, 1944. So I was right on the age. What is your name? My name is Udell Tunnel. T U N N E L L, it looks like. Uh, what something do I like best? I guess it's subject, it looks like. What subject do I like best? I like spelling best. What game do you like best? I like baseball best. What experience have you liked the best? I like Bible stories. I don't know why it says experience. <laughs> That's funny. I like Bible stories best. What reader did you like best? They would pass those around the school. There was usually only one reader for a certain grade, and you just pass it from place to place. That's what my grandmother said, anyway. Which reader did you like best? I like We Grow Up Best. And then it's got his addition and subtraction. It has just a few problems of each, multiplication, that type of thing. I'm flying <laughs> with the Captain America or Captain America, listen to me, the Captain Air Force type thing or whatever. Maybe he like the airplanes. Okay, so we had seen the flower, looks like from a lot of floral arrangements. Of some sort, we saw the floral 
tape. Okay, this says Tunnel Funeral, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Gertrude's Flower Shop. This one wasn't even open. I don't normally open, but I will. It's Yellow Cab and the Boys. So maybe her husband passed away or something. Looks like it's mostly little boy stuff in there. Though. Several of these I want to open. Employees of the Central Foundry. Further down we get, the smellier it gets. This water's been sitting here a while. Ah, cool. Photographs. Looks like maybe these look. These almost look like I don't know if you can see them. Little cabin type of things here. Maybe Boy Scout bunker type of things. Could be military. This is Camp Trask. Yeah, these are company bunkers. Bunkers with the flag and thing. Yeah. Second one. Ah, cadet type school maybe. Can you see that for the glare? These are in really good shape actually. Just go through this real quickly because it's in poor shape, you know, it's wet and my boys jacket. <laughs> Underwear and apparently they didn't have much. This was pinned. So it would stay on. That's sad, isn't it? We have so much now. We take it all for granted. Size 8 Jim Penny. Now oh, that's cool. Shorts. <laughs> Looks like those were used a lot. Of course, these are the button up kind. I don't know if you can see that or not. These are the ones with the buttons. Here's a more of a dress slacks type of thing. You see how they have the wide legs? Really wide legs. For a little boy. Those are little. I'll check the pockets and stuff later. I don't know if I found anything in the comments. <laughs> little boys stick frogs and everything else. That's no telling what might have been in here. Jacket. Looks like maybe more of a dress shirt. All of these are in pretty rough shape. Vintage tags. Looks like some more shirts. Underwear. Go through. Pull out interesting. These are dungarees, it looks like. Overalls. Boys' oh, overalls. These actually look in pretty good shape, even though they've got some holes in the knees. He might have worn those to school. Wool pants. The cuffs. The big cuffs on the bottom.
been tucking up a few times. <laughs> Probably went through more than one, one child. Women used to know how to sew back then. Another pair. Third pair. Mostly your shirts, pants, a lot of vintage tags. And oh, oh, looks like a composition book. Spelling, maybe, since you like spelling. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see if I can even read this. Let's see. Is something about December 16th. Something about beginning Christmas on December 16th. Have 10 days to celebrate. It's very cold. And then it's talking about going from house to house with carolers. And trees have been put up. Bear with me here. <laughs> Reading little boy's writing is not always easy. <laughs> Looks like he studied his spelling words or his cursive. Gosh, can you see that at all? Gosh, I hope so. I see some here. Apparently, he made a mistake on that when he X through it. <laughs> I don't count that. But you see, they didn't tear the pages out. I kept it in the... Oh, I love to tell the story of unseen things. There's an old hymn. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. About the people growing tomatoes, peppers, onions, cantaloupe, more onions, <laughs> flowers of all kinds. They mine for gold and silver, fish with nets, and make baskets, and something to sell. I can't make that out. They make many things, many beautiful things. They keep lots of goats, chickens, sheep. He's, apparently he's telling us stories. Once in the deer days, he said. <laughs> I can make out words here and there on this, talking about the dusk and the firelight gleamed softly. It looks like part of a poem. He's writing some stories. Ah, notice of assignment. Let's go as a. Oh, cool. <laughs> May 23rd. Can you see that? That's my birthday. This is 1945. That wasn't my birthday. <laughs> my mom and dad were five. It says Northport. Patty Beeson was the teacher, and the principal was Miss Nellie Reynolds. It says, Dear Miss Tunnel, Udell will continue his work from the point reached at the close of this year. Next year, he will work in a fourth grade group. Oh, wow. All right, so this is Gavin Udell Tunnel. It's handwritten. Son of Mr. and Mrs. J.R. Tunnel drowned in Warrior River the 19th day of May, 1945, 
and was found May 23rd and buried May 24th, 1945. He was born July 25th, 1935. He had one sister, Gwendolyn. So, apparently this little boy passed away and these are his, his personal effects. Okay, so they found him on my birthday. Wow. More progress reports. Okay, this was January 3rd, 1944. Dear parents, I'm pleased to write you that Udell has shown some progress in some of his studies at school, but his work is entirely too advanced for him. I'm helping him individually all I can, and I know you are too. His arithmetic is quite satisfactory, but his reading, spelling, and writing give him much trouble. I try not to make him unhappy about his work, as I think he does the very best that he can. He cooperates nicely with his classmates and is a well-behaved child. And that's signed by his teacher, Miss Winnie B. Clay, at North Point Elementary. Days absent, one, party, zero, days present, 37. And then, of course, the mom signs it on the back, or the dad. There are several of these in there. Looks like. Progress reports. November, that one's February 28th, that's my dad's birthday. <laughs> November one is November the 1st, it's the day before my mother's birthday. That's interesting. Okay, so here's the actual obituary of the child. It says, efforts to locate body unsuccessful youth drowned in river here. Udell Tunnel, aged nine, of North Point, North Port, was reported drowned shortly before five o'clock Saturday afternoon in the Warrior River when he slipped and fell while seining for minnows about 30 feet below the spillway at Oliver Dam on the north side of the stream. A crew from the Tuscaloosa Fire Department headed by this chief spent more than two hours dragging the river in an effort to locate the body but were not successful. Matthew said that the dragging will be continued today. And so they're telling about that there was another child with him and that the child tried to save him. My goodness, that's so sad. They were seining for minnows with a net when the young tunnel boy slipped on a rock and was sucked underneath by the swift current. His companion, Tommy Bell, tried frantically to pull him out of the water by grabbing at the net. He yelled for help and a group of fishermen hurried to the spot, but by the time that they got there, the youth's body had disappeared. And then it says the Fitz Cab Company that we found the little card for. Fitz Cab Company is where the father was employed. It's funny, when I was at this auction, I kind of looked through a little bit of the top things and I thought, well, there might be some interesting stuff on down in there. And nobody bid on it but me. I bid the first bid, $10, and nobody else bid on it. I just, I don't know, I felt like I ought to buy it. <laughs> it's got a lot of intertwined dates with our family. That's kind of interesting. And he wrote a little story about the flicker bird. Flicker. So sometimes you find sad stories in some of these things. This little boy was doing what he loved. Was 
same age as my granddaughter. So that gives me something to think about. Thanks for joining me, guys.